Welcome to the Bible Lounge again. Today we're taking a look at the authority of Scripture. And what do we mean by the authority of Scripture? Essentially that nothing is higher than Scripture. Nothing can overrule Scripture um, in terms of what the Scripture can tell you what to do. Um, every person is subject to the Word of God. Remembering the Scriptures are not just a book, not just something made by man, but it is the Word of God. And when God speaks and commands and tells us about what the world is like and what has happened in history, that is truth. And there is nothing that is truer or more relevant for us to uh, enact, to live by. So we're going to jump into 2 Timothy 3, um, verses 14 to 17. Um, as, again, a classic verse that will come up time and time again if you listen to uh, anything that I'm teaching. Um, this verse tells us about the authority of Scripture uh, in terms of the foundation. So let's read it together. Remember, it's the Apostle Paul talking to Timothy, his disciple, um, who is going out and planting churches and so forth. He says, As for you, continue in what you have learned and have firmly believed, knowing from whom you learned it, and how from childhood you have been acquainted with the sacred writings which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. All scripture, these are these sacred writings, this is all scripture, is breathed out by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction and for training in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, equipped for every good work. So we saw previously um, under special revelation that it is the word of God that uh, informs us about uh, salvation, okay, uh, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. Um, that uh, we don't have that uh, wisdom for salvation, the way of salvation outside of the word of God, general revelation or nature itself only gives us enough information for us to know our conscience condemns us. Um, but we have salvation through the word of God, through the scriptures, um, God's plan of redemption. And here we have the authority pointed out uh, within this. Um, and it centers on, on this. All scripture is breathed out by God. Breathed out by who? God. When God speaks, he is the highest, his words are the highest, his commands are the highest. So the scriptures have this authority because there is no uh, higher truth. There is no higher truth. There is no higher person to command. Um, if you consider a, a military uh, situation, and you have, um, say, your, your commander-in-chief. So the top dog. Um, if they command you to do something versus, um, say, your, you know, um, sergeant. How do you spell sergeant? E-A-N-T? Oh dear, maybe I should have said captain. Um, <laughs> point being, if you receive a command from your commander-in-chief, um, a command from your sergeant or say a lieutenant or a captain or someone lower, um, you're not going to listen to them if there is a contradiction. The, so the commander-in-chief you'll listen to, the sergeant you won't if there is a conflict. And what we're talking about when we say that there is no higher truth than God's word, there is no higher authority than God's word, is whatever that chain of command, you cannot go higher than God's word. You cannot go higher than God's word. Why? Because it is breathed out by God himself. It's breathed out by God himself. Um, this breathing out indicates uh, the means by which it's breathed out. Um, in the same way that God breathed into man to put the spirit of man in him, this is the breathing out 
a, a breath of God uh, into his word, um, the, the work of the Holy Spirit to inspire um, scripture. So uh, Jesus is also called the word of God. So you see this Trinitarian aspect to the word of God as well. Um, the, the scriptures are the revelation of God the Father, um, of, and it's revealing Christ, revealing the word of God, and it is carried out by means of the Holy Spirit, inspiring uh, those who, who uh, wrote it. Holy men of God were moved uh, by God's Spirit. So hopefully that's really clear, that that's the highest authority. Um, I want to give you an example now uh, from the Old Testament with Jeremiah of where this uh, may have been challenged. So we have an example here of Jeremiah versus uh, this chap, Hananiah. And uh, Jeremiah was the prophet from God. Hananiah, he is a false prophet. So Jeremiah, good. Uh, Hananiah, bad. Um, and Hananiah, this, this first verse here, sometime after the prophet, Hananiah had broken the yoke bars from off the neck of Jeremiah the prophet. The word of the Lord came to Jeremiah. So Hananiah, uh, Jeremiah had been commanded to wear um, a, uh, a sign of, um, of submission and slavery that an ox would wear, the yoke that goes over its neck when it's plowing the field, um, and shows that it is a servant of its owner um, to work for it. And Jeremiah wore this uh, as a sign of Israel's impending slavery to Babylon. And Hananiah, the false prophet, had said, no, 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 no. That slavery is not going to happen. It's going to be broken. Um, and you're not going to go into captivity, basically. Or well, the captivity won't endure for very long. Uh, and then and Jeremiah had received something different from God. So Hananiah is saying that he's speaking from God, but he's not really. And you can see where the authority comes from here. Um, the authority comes from when God truly speaks. So here's God truly speaking to Jeremiah to pass on the message to Hananiah and obviously those who are looking on uh, about what God has really said. He says, go tell Hananiah, thus says the Lord, uh, you have broken wooden bars, but you have made in their place bars of iron. So he's, uh, for thus, I won't explain it because he explains it below. For thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, I have put upon the neck of all these nations an iron yoke to serve Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, and they shall serve him, for I have given to him even the beasts of the field. And Jeremiah the prophet said to the prophet Hananiah, Listen, Hananiah, the Lord has not sent you, and you have made this people trust a lie. Let me read that to you again. Jeremiah said to the prophet Hananiah, Listen, Hananiah, the Lord has not sent you. The Lord has not sent you and you have made this people trust in a lie scary words may you never hear words like that that the lord has not sent you and you have made this people trust in a lie this this should give us a uh, reason to pause if we uh, think we have heard a word from the lord or if we think we are teaching God's wisdom out of his word, we need to be very, very careful that we are teaching in the way that we should, that we are truly bringing the word of the Lord. So it's a huge caution lest we um, undermine um, the authority of God's word and misteach, um, that is, teach the wrong thing, or um, you know, make people think God is something that he is not or make people think God has said to do something that he has not. So the word of God that we have is our sure word since it is breathed out by God. And in this case, this is a record of what God has breathed out to Jeremiah. We read further, verse 16, after Hananiah has been told the Lord has not sent him and he's made the people trust a lie. Therefore, thus says the Lord, behold, I will remove you from the face of the earth. This year you shall die. Why shall you die? Because you have uttered rebellion against the Lord. So making people trust a lie is rebellion. Rebellion against the Lord. 
and in that same year, in the seventh month, the prophet Hananiah died. He presumed to speak with an authority that was not correct. Hananiah's word was just the word of a man. God's word is God's word. And we have this huge caution not to undermine the authority, not to usurp or to take the authority uh, away from God in his word. Don't take authority over God's word. Okay, God's word is authoritative. There is no higher authority and you are on very dangerous ground if you claim any authority, spiritual authority, um, over what God's word has said. Well, that's quite heavy. Um, Christ has spoken. We read in Hebrews, if you saw the previous uh, video as well on special revelation, in these last days, he, God, has spoken to us by his son. That's authority. When we claim to speak from God, we better be speaking what Christ has taught us in his word, lest we are doing the same thing as Hananiah and coming up with our own imaginations and trying to tell people things will be good when they won't be good or trying to shortcut God's plan. Well, pretty heavy stuff, but I hope you can get a sense of the authority of the scriptures. May this be a blessing to you. If you found it helpful, please like and subscribe and all of that stuff. Please share it with your friends um, and uh, have a bit of a conversation surrounding this. Uh, talk with each other, things you agree, disagree with, um, things that you uh, would like to get in touch with, please do. God bless. Bye-bye.